Welcome to Attainable Green. I'm Jess and today we're going to be talking about catacetums. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about the plants in the self-watering setup. Last year, I experimented with three different setups for my catacetums. I had some in self-watering setups with LECA, um, another in the PET method, which is kind of a hybrid semi-hydroponic setup with a water reservoir on the bottom and then um, some inorganic and organic media on top. And the last setup is the traditional moss media. Now that the plants are dormant, it's easier to see how big the bulbs have gotten during the growing season. And um, I'll do a little bit of comparison um, about these plants. I'm gonna focus mostly on the plants in the self-watering setup and uh, give a couple of thoughts and observations that I've noticed. So overall, the four plants that I have in self-watering are doing fantastic. Um, they all survived, they all grew, and um, I don't really have any problems with these plants. As for the size of the pseudobulbs from the last growing season, there is quite of a wide range of differences. Two of the plants had significant growth. You can definitely tell that the newest bulb is larger than the previous bulbs. However, for two of the other plants, the growth is not as um, strong. One of them grew about the same size as the previous bulb, and one is actually about half the size of the previous bulb. So there is some variation in growth, but that is not a deterrent for using this method. My catacetums spend most of their time outdoors, and when I water these plants, they get watered with a hose. So while um, plants in moss or semi-hydroponics has a little bit of a drain for overflow of water, um, the ones in this setup don't. I have to manually remove the water from the reservoir and dump it, and in some cases, that didn't actually happen. During the growing season, sometimes these plants would be sitting in a lot of water and I would have to dump it out. And also other times, um, the reservoir would be empty and I wouldn't notice, so it wouldn't get uh, water until the next watering session. I was not very good at monitoring the water levels in this type of setup, and I think it's better suited to an indoor environment. So although my plants did grow really well in self-watering, I feel like um, with the way that I am watering my plants and where they're located for the growing season, um, self-watering just doesn't work for me. I'm gonna keep these plants in LECA, but in a more semi-hydroponic setup with a reservoir on the bottom and a drain above it so that um, it doesn't sit in too much water over time. So I'm gonna dive in specifically to each uh, individual plant to go over um, how they did. So the first plant is the Cloacetum alexandra saba. As you can see, the latest growth is twice the size of the previous growth, and that is definitely a good sign. You really want these plants to keep continue to grow larger and larger. Cloacetum bulbs tend to be a little bit smaller and fatter than typical catacetums. So the growth of this plant is definitely in line with its regular growth pattern. This plant did the best in the self-watering setup and it definitely shows. Um, I think it really likes having access to all that water and it just looks really good. So I'm hoping to continue that um, with the next growing season. The next plant is the Marmodia uh, Painted Desert crossed with Catacetum Melania Davidson. As you can see, the newest growth is also larger than the previous growth. It's not as big as the um, Alexandra Sava, but it's pretty close. I would say that the latest bulb is about one and a half times the previous growth, which is still pretty good. When this plant was put into self-watering, um, it basically had um, the moss plug in the core and then it had LECA surrounding it. Um, when I removed it from the media, I noticed that um, the roots did extend past the moss into the LECA and it's definitely looking quite vigorous. I'm hoping to continue the momentum with this plant and hopefully it will continue to grow well. The next plant is the Cloesia Rebecca Northern Grapefruit Pink. Now this is my oldest catacetum. I've had it for about four years now and I got this from Odom's. Um, it never really did well for me because I just didn't know how to take care of it. So I made a couple of mistakes with this plant, but I think this year it's actually doing okay. The pseudobulb is about uh, the same size as last year's bulb, which is not a great sign, but I think that the roots itself are looking a lot healthier. Plus there is a small spike coming from the base of the pseudobulb, so hopefully we can see some flowers later in the season. When this plant was potted in self-watering, um, I removed all of the moss media and I just placed it straight into the LECA. Um, I think this actually helped uh, this particular plant to grow because the roots are very fine. It had to search um, for ways to adapt and to um, get as much moisture as possible. 
I have three Rebecca Northerns and they're all in different setups. So as the growing season continues, it'll be interesting to compare these later on to see how they do with different media. The last plant is the Mermodi's um, Wild Rainbow crossed with Nitty Gritty. Now, this particular Mermodi's was a little bit problematic before I even put it into self-watering. Um, and even after, I noticed that the latest growth is about half the size of the previous growth. Also, one of the pseudobulbs had um, consumed itself, so now we're left with about two uh, pseudobulbs. When I removed it from the pot, I noticed that there weren't any roots that had extended past the moss plug um, into the LECA material at all. That is a sign to me that this plant is struggling to create its root system, and I'm gonna have to do a little bit more work to figure out what is the reason why I'm having trouble with this plant. I'm gonna keep this plant in moss um, since the roots are not large enough to grow past the media and see how it will do for the next growing season. Most of these plants do well during the dormancy period. Um, you don't have to water them and they kind of hold and retain a lot of moisture. Um, usually the newest bulbs should stay nice and firm and some of the back bulbs can shrivel a little bit. For the Mermodies in particular, I noticed that even the newest pseudobulb was starting to shrivel a little bit. So I gave it a drink of water and the next day um, it plumped right back up. Now that is pretty typical of most catacetums. If you notice that um, it starts shriveling a little bit, just give it a little bit of water. The next day it should plump right back up. It's okay to water catacetums during the dormancy period. Um, in fact, you just want to observe and keep track of your plants to make sure that they stay healthy during this time. Um, each one has a different personality and behavior, so some may dry out faster than others. I tend to keep the dried sheets on the newest bulbs as much as possible because in my climate, it tends to be pretty dry. And I noticed that if I peeled back the sheets during the dormancy period or beforehand, um, the bulbs tend to be a little bit more shriveled than the ones that have that um, dried sheath around it. I think that the sheaths actually help retain a little bit of moisture for this plant. So that's why I do it. When the leaves fall off the pseudobulbs, um, the sheaths remain and the tips of them tend to have points. So they tend to be kind of like little thorns around the pseudobulbs. And that's just a way for them to prevent them from being eaten in the wild. But just to beware, um, if you're handling these plants, do not handle it from the top and be careful if you're moving between or cleaning between the bulbs because the tops of those sheaths can be pretty spiky. So that is the overview of the catacetums in self-watering and how they're doing in my environment. As much as I love self-watering setups in my indoor environment, I find that it's less useful um, in an outdoor uh, situation. So for these catacetums, I'm gonna be transferring them from self-watering to actually a more semi-hydroponic setup. So all of these plants have been doing well in LECA. I'm gonna keep them in LECA and hopefully we'll see how they react during the new growing season. Um, one thing that I have to keep in mind is that um, because these plants are in LECA, they don't hold as much water. And during the growing season here, it can get very hot and very sunny, which means that I may have to water these plants slightly more than the ones potted in moss or in the hybrid semi-hydroponic PET method. I'll share with you how that goes once the growing season actually starts and these plants start to break from dormancy. But for right now, um, these plants are completely dormant and one is in spike, so we'll just hold on and see how they do from here on out. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, Attainable Green, to follow along on my orchid growing journey. If you wanna see more videos about catacetums, please click on the playlist and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.